So it has been an exciting couple of weeks. We've had an announcement on Lost Ark's Western release, we've had some new MMOs released recently, and we have some recent updates for some of our favorites. And then we also have an MMO that's shutting down, which is always sad to see. And then at the same time, I happen to have a cold, and Mrs. Sticks also happens to have a cold. Thank you, random person that was sitting next to me on the airplane, coughing and sneezing all over me. I appreciate that, but hey, let's just take a minute Lean back, close your eye. Actually, mate, don't don't even close your eyes. Heck, just look at this nice, clean, shaven haircut that I got for all of you. And let's jump into this week's weekly bite of MMORPG news. Before we do, though, I would like to let you know about today's sponsor, Entropia Universe. Entropia Universe is one of the largest free-to-play sci-fi MMORPGs on the market. Unlike most MMOs, Entropia Universe actually allows for players to either invest in or earn in-game currency and convert that into real-world currency, providing players the ability to actually make a living off of playing the game. It features several incredibly large worlds for players to explore with a variety of activities to engage in, such as hunting, crafting, and gathering. But it's also a pretty traditional MMO in terms of exploration and combat. I have done a video on this game in the past, and I will admit it is a very interesting game. I have not played a game like this before. If you haven't already, but you're looking for a free-to-play MMO that offers that little something special, it's something unique, I guess then I urge you to click the link in the description in the pinned comment to try the game out. Worst case scenario, you waste a few minutes, but on the other hand, you might actually find that you actually enjoy the game. Despite some people claiming that Astelia Online is dead, the game is still pretty positively talked about. It turned out to be a small little sleeper hit that offered players some short-term fun. I mean, I, I guess I say short term, but at the same time, the game probably has come out with more content in the last couple months of being online than Bless Online did over the course of its entire life. Now, Astelia is expanding further by launching on a Steam on January 30th, and with it, it is bringing a plethora of new content, including 64-person guild battles, new dungeons, new Astels, and a new 12-person raid. Yeah, plenty of new endgame PvE content, and even new PvP options. Honestly, the team behind the game, at least right now, seem pretty committed to bringing players what they promised. Whether or not they are capable of continuing to do so remains to be seen, but at least presently, at least right now, things are looking pretty good for the game. Now let's go ahead and talk about what is probably the most anticipated MMORPG of the next few months, Temtem. Mrs. Stix did her full review of the first half of the game. It was posted just a couple days ago if you want to go ahead and check that one out. We'll also be doing a giveaway for two, maybe three copies of the game for those of you that are interested in trying the game out but you can't afford it. Links to both will be in the description in the pinned comment below. As of this video going live, there will probably only be like a day or two left. So if you want to participate, make sure you go ahead and visit our website to join in while you can. Now, as for Temtem itself, the game had been in the process of running several stress tests all month to make certain the game could handle the influx of players when it launched into early access on January 21st. While there have definitely been some issues, trust me, there were. I'm a part of the subreddit. I saw it just absolutely filled with people complaining that they were getting disconnected, that the queues were just incredibly long. The game overall had a pretty solid launch, if you don't count people complaining about the first day being filled with bugs, which, you know, is something that every MMO launch has. The game is buy to play, meaning that you'll have to pay a one-time fee to play it. Honestly though, from what I've seen of upwards of 30 hours of alpha gameplay and then a little bit of the early access as well, I can say that I am incredibly excited for the game and although the game is, as mentioned, upwards of $30 depending on your region, I feel like it's worth it either way. The last time I mentioned the Elder Scrolls Online, they had just announced their plans for the Dark Heart of Skyrim, which, I'm gonna be honest here, has reignited fan interest in the game. The Dark Heart of Skyrim specifically is a year-long story arc that is going to take place within Skyrim. It'll feature quarterly updates beginning with the Harrow Storm next month in February that brings with it a new 12-player trial called Kind's Ages and two new dungeons, Ice Reach and Unhallowed Grave, then Greymore in May. Mrs. Styx and I are actually beginning our journey through the Elder Scrolls Online currently, so hopefully by the time the deal DLC launches will be caught up and ready to play and oh god I'm actually beginning to lose my voice a little bit here. Unfortunately there has been no information released regarding the two remaining DLC but whenever Zenimax reveals details you guys will be the first to hear about it. I know a lot of you are eagerly anticipating any news pertaining to Fantasy Star Online 2. The last video I did on the closed beta, which was like last month I think, has garnered well over 100,000 views already so trust me, 
I know. The official PSO2 Twitter recently tweeted that they are working hard to ensure that beta experiences up to their standards, and that currently they don't have any additional information on when the closed beta is going to take place. While that isn't really very reassuring, it is good to know that at the very least, they are not leaving us here hanging for months without any information, even if that information is that the closed beta is coming. Still, sometime. Like, I know you're all anxious, but don't worry, it is definitely coming. Now, I'm not sure how many of you ultimately ended up actually playing Guardians of Ember when it relaunched, let alone how many of you really even enjoyed it, but I did a series of gameplay videos on it, and really, it was not a bad game. Nevertheless, I received an email from GameForge. Actually, I believe everyone that was playing Guardians of Ember received an email from GameForge stating that the game was officially shutting down. The reasons behind the game shutting down weren't really disclosed, with GameForge specifically stating, the contract between RuneWalker and GameForge will not be continued. The game will be closing its doors next month on February 14th, so if you want to get in-game and see what it has to offer before it closes for good, this is your chance. But then at the same time, I say closes for good, but knowing the MMO scene, this is probably going to end up being like repurchased and relicensed and then like relaunched maybe a couple years from now, potentially under a different name even, who knows. So if you weren't already aware, Perfect World Entertainment released a trailer for their new upcoming Magic Legends game last week. It was met with some, uh, <laughs> some, I guess, criticism would be a very nice way of phrasing what was said about the game. Nevertheless, they are pushing onwards and have announced the official release dates for both PC and console. Or, well, not the official release date, I guess, like a, a definitive day or even a week, but a season at least. Magic Legends will be launching on PC in spring 2020. This year, while the game will be releasing on a console sometime next year in 2021. Interestingly though, uh, spring 2020, that is when Fantasy Star Online 2 and New World are both launching. That is a, a very interesting choice of month or an interesting choice of season to go ahead and release the game in. That is going to be a lot of competition and I don't know, like me personally, I've seen a trailer. It doesn't really look that good. I don't really see it taking off all that much, especially when the competition is PSO2 in New World. So uh, yeah, this this release date might kill any chance Magic Legends might have of actually like garnering a any form of population really. I actually just did a video for this on my mobile channel, I'm a mobile mobile, but next on, yeah. That Nexon is actually porting, quite poorly I might add, V4, a recently released mobile MMORPG over to PC, where games like Genshin Impact and Grand Saga are being built specifically with cross-platform compatibility in mind, and NCSoft are making their new purple platform to emulate games natively on PCs, Nexon's like doing a Nexon quality port. If you're a fan of Nexon or the games they publish, then this might be exciting news for you, but honestly, from past experience, I'd probably go into this knowing what they're offering, and that is absolutely nothing. All in all though, <laughs> the game, it, it does look really good visually. In AT Games, the team behind it really outdid themselves. Despite being almost a decade old at this point, DC Universe Online is still pushing out regular content updates. Granted, these updates, which take on the form of episodes, are only available to players with an active subscription or those who pay a small one-time fee per episode, meaning that you need to be a paying player to actually participate in any of the content. However, due to their anniversary event, they've enabled all players, completely free-to-play players, the ability to play every DLC episode completely free until February 7th. Yeah, that is a ton of content to get through, so if you're a free player and you have yet to play some of the paid DLC, now's your chance. For those of you still under the impression that a Bless title is worth devoting any time to, then you'll be happy to know that starting January 30th, Bless Unleashed will be holding stress tests prior to their upcoming launch. They also have a new Bless mobile game coming too, because you know, milking PC players and then milking Xbox players wasn't enough. For those of you still playing Kurtzpel, you'll be happy to hear that they have quite the update planned for this month. Not only are they adding 3-4 to four player group missions and new dailies for players interested in the PvE aspect of the game, but they're also adding a lot of changes to PvP next season and a new Karma. If you were looking for a brand new Karma to play as because you were bored with what you had access to, 
then the following night is coming in the form of a cannon user. Honestly, there is just too much for me to really go over here. So your best bet would be to go on and head on over to the official CursePal website if you're interested in seeing exactly what's new. Like, I'm gonna be honest here. I think I've spoken about Dungeons and Dragons online like once, maybe in the last six to eight months I've been doing these news videos for, but I am pleasantly surprised to not only see new content being pushed out, but in the form of a brand new class, the Alchemist. I never really invested much time into Dungeons and Dragons Online because I was j honestly just busy with other games. But if you've ever wanted to try the game out now, or at the very least when the new class rolls out might be the best opportunity to. And finally, I left the best, or worst really, for last. It turns out, according to the Korean website The Bell, Smilegate, the team behind Lost Ark, actually have no intention of releasing the game in North America or Europe for the foreseeable future. Yeah, instead, they are attempting to fight the constantly declining population by developing new endgame content, all the while dealing with their recent Russian launch and their upcoming Japanese launch. We're pretty low in terms of importance right now, and you know what? That is all right. By the time the game launches over here as a buy-to-play MMO, we're going to have long since forgotten about it. Which, you know, they're lost really for delaying it so long. But hey, for those of you that are interested in actually playing the game, the game's Russian version is playable with a VPN like Exit Lag and an English translation. I actually have a link in the description to Exit Lag if you want to go ahead and use that to play the game. That is, after all, how I have played it and a lot of people currently do play it. And that is it. That is all the MMO news that has been brought to my attention over the last two weeks. If you know of anything I missed, feel free to hit me up on Discord, on Twitter, on Instagram, or even in the YouTube comments below with a link to the article so I can go ahead and discuss it. Anyway guys, that is it for me. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you all next time. Peace. Someday soon, I'm gonna make